so nervous. So nervous. <laughs> Hi guys, what's up? It's me, Audra. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new, I'm not sure how you got here, but certainly I'm glad you came. And if you are new here, well, you're in for a treat. All right, if you are a fan of chaotic frenetic energy, you like horror foundation reviews and commentary, then this is a great place and you should subscribe. I promise it won't hurt you and for the low, low price of zero, zero dollars, you get to hang out with me and have this fabulous content for free. All right, and here are my socials. We should definitely hang out. There's absolutely nothing wrong with hanging out online together. We chat, we poll, we ask questions. It's gonna be a fun time. Okay. I had to jazz myself up because hoo, 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 hoo. Oh my God, so stressed out. The nervous goat farts are really on. So today I am here with another foundation review wear test and we are going to be doing the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. Ooh, ooh. Okay, that's its song. You don't know that, but that's its song in case you're wondering. When you get this, it sings that to you. So just, just know that that's a thing. All right, so I'm very excited to bring this to you. I have put it through several different wear tests, but before, we get started on the wear test. I just wanted to go over the claims. Let's stop. While I hold it, we're going to talk about its claims. It is $44 and it is the secret to a flawless, poreless looking, confident complexion. A stay all day, weightless, full coverage formula with a natural matte finish. This is a hybrid magic skincare foundation for every occasion. Why? It contains Charlotte's magic matrix of ingredients. I don't know what those are, but I don't think I want a matrix on my face. It's okay though, it's okay. It's got groundbreaking magic replexium. To significantly reduce the appearance of wrinkles by up to 22% after eight weeks of use, bitch, what? And it also uses moss cell tech to boost hydration by up to 216%. Air cool for an instant fresh feel on the skin. Has a unique CT defense that is designed to limit exposure of the skin to everyday pollutants. Gives a flawless, poreless looking finish. 95% agree, pores look reduced. All right, so we talked about it, we've gotten weird. And now we're going to talk about the application. So I'm going to be, um, maybe it's going to be a side-by-side, -side, or it may be up in here, I'm not sure, but I'm going to try to talk about it as I do the application process because I don't want you guys to be, feel like you're stuck in these videos for 20 minutes trying to find out about this foundation, but we're going to get there. So first and foremost, I'm looking at my notes. I'm a good student. So the first application I used one pump, it did work for my entire face. It went on smooth as fuck. The application of this, super easy. It just goes and it's so fast. It just blends easily, it blends like a dream, it goes on and I'm just like, what? And I was so impressed and I think you can probably see it on my face as I'm applying it. It has beautiful glow coverage. I love the matte. I am actually wearing it in 15 neutral and it does however have a very high transfer rate without powder so that's something i want you to know that that flows into other try-ons or wear tests but it does actually do have a fairly high transfer so you do kind of want to be careful in that realm especially if you are not a powder bitch it transfers pretty hardcore um i did notice in my first application that i did have some dry spots that showed through around my mouth even with the hydrating primer but i chalked that up to maybe i just missed the spots around my mouth properly when I was applying the foundation, but they did show through regardless. So it could just be something that I did wrong. So then we go into the second application. For this, I am gonna tell you that because of the first one, I let me. I don't listen. Don't 
to each their own, nobody come for me, nobody try to murder me. Now I put my hair in a more distinguished position because I'm nervous that you guys are gonna eat me alive and I wanna live. So anyway, one of the things that I did notice in the first application in the first wear was that, listen, when the sun touched this baby, it was not, it wasn't a good time, it sweats. Uh, the foundation would sweat and it's not that it would look bad so don't get up don't be like i wore it in the sun it's not that it looks bad it's that you could almost feel it whatever these weird magical fake word compounds are that are in it you could almost kind of feel them like it's separated and then it came back together so it still looked okay it didn't look terrible it didn't look great um but it just kind of felt different i'm gonna say that it definitely felt different when the sun hit me in my face girl no joke no tricks no shade it's a bit greasy okay so that's what i'm gonna say it's a bit it's a bit greasy after looking at it it is a bit greasy um it was warm today it was about like 88 or so so it was a little bit greasy like it, it was hot i didn't i had not gotten to do hot shower yet that's gonna be tomorrow um it's a little bit greasy. I'm not a fan of that, but I've run into this before because I have oily skin currently combination, especially oily right here. Let's just see. I don't know if I have a little bit of residual powder. So what I'm going to do is just kind of, I'm going to do this thing where I do this and then I take a little bit out of the lid because like that's some weird shit. So there's not a lot in here. I don't know if you can even see it, but that way I could, basically I'm making it act like residual powder. extra right there so it looks easily fixed by a little bit of powder but for these wear test guys like one of the things that I make sure of when I first put it on is see how the foundation behaves without so I mean I look cute then the second application, I was like, listen, I'm not going to be beaten by this foundation. So I went ahead and I used mattifiers. I used my, the Botanics uh, mattifying toner and the mattifying uh, moisturizer. And I was like, we're going all in. So I did that and it still went on smoothly with all of that stuff. Uh, I also switched my primer from the hydrating primer to the uh, Becca velvet blurring primer so I switched to that it still went on smoothly like I said it does get a bit heavy in direct sunlight but it does recover nicely that's what I'm saying you can feel it though it's a strange sensation it's almost like you can kind of feel it trying to be like gah, gah, gah. and it's like uh, you know how like in 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 movies where like everything separates and then they go woo, 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 like sci-fi where like that's what it kind of feels like. I don't know if that's an actual feeling, but that's the only way that I can really explain it. It's like it just kind of the pick it depixelates and then pixelates back together and then it's like one thing again. It feels a little strange though. Um it does not hold up to sweat as well as I'd like it to. Cause, and, and what I mean by it doesn't hold up is that you can feel it. You can feel it while you're sweating. It, it, it was just me. Maybe it's me for reference. Again, I'm not sure if you guys are new to my channel, but I have combination skin that's currently trending oily. So when I started sweating, like I could feel the foundation like kind of going like... It just felt... I could feel it and I didn't like that because it's supposed to be weightless and I could just, I could really feel it working and I, it's, it was, just, I don't know how to explain it. It's a very odd sensation. And so I could feel it kind of sweating a little bit under there. So I was a little like, oh, okay, okay. Um, I did do it the hot shower test. Okay, so this is it after the first. Hey, how are you doing? So in order to avoid copyright, because my dumb ass forgot to turn off the TV, and I don't want you to listen to the Law & Order theme song, SVU version. So anyway, I'm just coming up close, kind of letting you know that it didn't break up around my nose. There is a little bit of breakage up around that little spot in my forehead. You know where my dent is. Don't look too close for the dent. Then, you know, I'm going to use this big ass mirror and really be looking at my face. I do feel like my pores look pretty good, even though I do look a little bit greasy. 
obviously it's humidity that is how it works not too bad it's pretty pretty attractive my makeup still looks pretty hot it looks good but it doesn't look terrible but it doesn't look great all right is that good enough for you do you think i did what i did also please note i do have more than one of these towels it didn't look great in humidity but and I wouldn't say humidity is this foundation's friend, okay? And I, like, humidity is a thing for me. I need a foundation to really, like, be there for me in humidity because it's Texas. And typically, North Texas wasn't humid, but now it's trending to where it's, like, humid every freaking summer. So every summer, I'm going to have to deal with humidity. I cannot have a foundation that either I can feel, and that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a very odd sensation that you can feel it doing things and i'm not a huge fan of it and by the way yes i'm wearing it right now so i could feel it kind of doing things like reformulating i don't know how to explain it was like weird science fiction shit was happening on my face but i could feel it all going on and it felt really awkward and weird and like jarring a little bit yeah so it's it's not science fiction guys it's waterproof uh, remember when i told you guys a little while ago that i don't like waterproof foundation this is the exact reason why because it's waterproof the intent is to keep all moisture out but when you're sweating underneath it you can feel it trying to come up in the foundation keeps trying to keep it down so it just is a very odd feeling and it's not for me so please don't like eat me up in the comments be like bitch you stupid i know thank you good night um, with the third application, I was like, I am not going to be beat because even with my mattifiers, it was still kind of coming through, getting a little too dewy too fast. And I just wasn't a fan. And I know that it's supposed to be a matte natural finish for me. It just wasn't really being matte and natural. So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta switch this up. We're gonna, we're gonna go in. We're going in. So listen, I grabbed my emergency kit. I started getting everything together. I dug into my brain and I thought, what can I do? What can I do to show this foundation who is boss? And so what I did is I did my mattifiers at night and I did them in the morning before the application because girl, I was not about to get taken down by this found, nah, -uh, not me, no sir. So I used my mattifiers for night and day. I definitely made sure to use less hydrating serums. I went in with my Becca primer because that primer is kind of dry. It's a dry sensation pr primer. It's, you know, it's great for oily skin, I'm definitely going to say, because it does hold shit the fuck back. So then I powdered my whole face, and I did that again today. I powdered my whole face. I was like, pow, 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 pow. Just a small, like, I didn't use a thick layer of powder. I just used a fairly thin layer of Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. And then I was like, okay, here we go. And then that's when it really seemed to stick. So it really stuck on my skin and had less issues with sunlight, less issues with the heat, less issues with the humidity. When I had my mattifiers in full effect, I used the velvet blurring primer that was just like, like basically I just put a dry mask on my face to just keep this foundation in intact because i just didn't like the feeling like it, it wasn't looking horrible don't get me wrong it wasn't looking horrible it just wasn't looking the way i wanted it to look and i felt like you know it's 44 dollars baby it's gotta it's gotta be doing the most you know and i loved how easily it went on so i didn't want to just give up on it either and i like the foundation for the mostest part but i don't like ooh, 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 ooh. i don't know i don't know we're gonna get there so my fourth application i didn't even use primer this time i did not go outside then it passed the hot shower test and that was like the best that i had it so far it was basically i just didn't go outside so essentially for me to really get this to be gorgeous, like it's gorgeous like right now, I love it, it looks beautiful. I just can't go outside. <laughs> like I cannot go outside in this Texas heat. It just doesn't hold up for me the way that I want a foundation to hold up in the Texas heat. I need to not feel it on my face. I need to not feel it start to sweat. That sensation is just too much for me because it just makes me feel like I, honestly it started to make me feel like I had to run to the bathroom every 10 minutes just to go look and make sure it was still in place. Like I was taking it out to take photos for the Slay a Day in May. I'm, I was really out there doing the most with this and I just started to worry like every time I felt that sensation and I don't know if it's whatever those made up ingredients are, made up word ingredients are. Uno mas tiempo para la gente in the back, it's waterproof. That's the 
that's the sensation. <laughs> but I could, it, you could just kind of feel it adjusting, I guess. That would be the word. You could feel it kind of adjusting to the heat and the temperature and the sunlight and all of that stuff. And it, 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 I just didn't want a whole science project going on on my face. Now when I'm inside, it is perfectly acceptable. And when you use the powder, the transfer goes down significantly. If you don't use it with powder, I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna experience quite a bit more transfer than you're probably used to with the foundation. So this foundation, this foundation is an event foundation, guys. This is an I'm at work and I'm never going outside foundation. This is a we're going on a date but you're not getting any nookie foundation. This is a I have an, an, an interview and I want everybody to think I'm glorious foundation. But I'm literally going through my car into the building like I'm not even going to have to step foot into the motherfucking sun foundation. This is a I'm a bougie bitch. Do not look at me. Do not talk to me foundation. And that is where it fucking shines. So this foundation is going to shine for like pictures. If you like, if you were doing a wedding, yes, girl, but not outdoor, not outdoor. But if you're doing a wedding, yes, be like, mm, be like, mm, be like, mm, be like, mm, -hmm. be like, I just got married. Like that's what you really want to be doing. This is this is a foundation for you know things. Like this is not a foundation that you're going to wear every day. At least I wouldn't. I would not use this as my daily wear foundation. No way, no how. However, if I had an event or when I'm filming, girl, I love to wear this foundation because look at me. Look at me right now. Do I not look flawless? Do I not look like I don't have a pore on my face? You're damn right I do. I look like I don't have a pore anywhere. I look pores? Who's she? I don't know. When I'm wearing this, I look absolutely stunning. The other thing I don't like about this foundation, I am going to say, is like a lot of it's neutral and I like a red tone. I like a red tone, okay? And I, this this particular one, I think by the time they got to a red tone, it was too dark for me. And I was like, I don't really want neutral. So if you are a person who is dark skinned, <laughs> or you're just a person who likes a red tone in your foundation, what I did is I went and I actually used, uh, with my bronzer, I would go in with this Steve Laurent blush, which we're not gonna talk about how I dug into it one time. But I would go in with this and just kind of tap it into my bronzer to give it more of that reddish feel and give this foundation some more dimension because I just, that's one of the re reasons I love a red undertone in my foundation is because it gives the foundation dimension, it gives my skin dimension. It just really makes me look very like, ooh, oh, uh -huh. Ooh. So personally, if I had to repurchase, I wouldn't repurchase this. Like I know, I know, I'm sorry, but if you're looking for a foundation, like if you have oily skin, maybe this one isn't the best for you. Maybe not. For me, it just really was not my, my jam to wear every day. But again, if you're looking for a foundation where you want to look like a flawless ass bitch for like photos, for an event, for maybe you're going somewhere and you just need to make sure that everyone knows, you know, you are the one then this is it, then this is it, because you're gonna wear it inside, you're not gonna be doing a lot of movement, running around, girl, I'm so glad I did not try to exercise in this because, ooh, the stress, the stress. But I'm gonna tell you right now, um, it does stay on, it does, it does stay on. The thing is, if you, like, me, maybe I'm overly sensitive with my skin, I don't know, but I could feel it doing work. Like, even right now, I'm starting to sweat on my upper lip and I can actually feel, and I don't know if the camera's picking up, but I'm starting to sweat a little bit here from the lights. And the only reason I know I'm starting to sweat is because I can feel it. Like, I can feel that this is doing something and I don't know what it is, it's making me nuts. Like, I, I, I'm a weird person like that. I have uh, other foundations where I start sweating and most of the time I don't really know until it's actually beaded up and it's like on the skin, like it's pushed through. But this, it's like I can, it's it's like it knows that like the sweat is coming and it's like it's trying to like tell the sweat to fuck off. I don't know. But yeah, other uh, for my money, I wouldn't use this as my daily foundation. I would not buy this at $44. I personally wouldn't buy this for my daily foundation. But again, I live in Texas. I'm 40, combination oily skin. And in Texas right now, it is humid. It's storm time especially. So we're literally having it rain and just torrential downpours. Like it's there's going to be a flood, rains, and then the next day it's 90 degrees. I need a foundation that can stand that. And if, if, if you can't, like, 
bye girl bye get out of my face so this foundation for me was just not like my winner and honestly I feel terrible because I feel like so many people love Charlotte Tilbury but this just wasn't for me sis and I'm so sorry but like also I'm not sorry because that's the whole point of these wear tests and for those of you that don't know a big reason why I do these wear tests uh, and I've said this in a live but a big reason I do these wear tests is because first impressions of foundation are not okay for me. And the reason I say that is because your foundation is typically going to be one of the most expensive parts of your makeup routine. Not skincare, makeup. Don't get it twisted. Uh, they're gonna, it's going to be one of the most expensive parts of your makeup routine. I know you'd be like, but girl, don't you have like a $50 eyeshadow palette? I do, but I'm not going to buy this every 30 to 60 days. So that that's the thing about foundation is you're having to buy it every 30 to 60 days. A first impression doesn't really give you the information you need to know whether or not you can wear this foundation every single day. And I have been down that road so many times where I took a recommendation and I bought this foundation and it just wasn't for me. It like, and, and it's because they just did a first impression. There's nothing that anybody did wrong, but they just did a first impression. I was like, ooh, that looks good on them. But I didn't realize, oh, okay, well this is for oily skin, this is for dry skin, this is for this kind of skin, this is for sensitive skin. This is a, a finish that I don't like. Mm -hmm. This finish, I do like the finish actually. The finish is actually very, very nice. And it is weightless for the most part. You can't feel it on your face. But I am gonna say this last thing about this foundation in particular, if you get that sweaty feeling and, you're in, and it does the come part come back together, I am going to tell you that when I was in the sun and all that and I came back inside, I could not wait to get it off my face. No joke. And the, the only time that I'm like that when I have this foundation on is literally when I've been out in the sun, I want to wash this off immediately. Immediately. I just want it off my face. There's something about like this, whatever it made up word ingredients are in it that when it when it receives the sun my face sees the sun and I come back inside and I cool off and it reformulates back on my face I'm like nope get it off get it off get it off and I even tried to wait and see like maybe I was just being crazy I was like well let me just cool let me just cool nope even then I would like get it off so for my money I wouldn't spend the $44 to have this as my daily however I would spend the $44 if I wanted to just look bomb as fuck for an event, I definitely guarantee, like, would say that for this. It wears pretty well. Um, it does do about eight hours. I know they say all day and night. That's I just that's those are stupid claims to me. It's nothing against her. It's every foundation. I've even said that about Becca. Like that's dumb. Stop telling me that because I'm not wearing foundation that long. Who 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 is in these streets wearing foundation for 24 hours? For what? Re why why are you staying awake? You better stop doing them drugs. All right, guys, that is it. That is the video. What did you think of my review? Did this help you? Did this hurt you? Are you getting angry in the comments? Please don't get angry. We can agree to disagree. It's totally fine. All right, thank you so much. A huge, huge shout out to my patrons, without which I would not be able to do all the fun, fabulous things that I get to do. Um, we will be voting on the next foundation tryout next. We'll, do, we'll be doing that this Sunday, I believe. I'm hoping that this will be up Saturday or Sunday. Who cares? Who cares? We're gonna do it. We're, you guys are gonna be voting. We'll talk about it. We'll probably have done it last Sunday. Who cares? All right, guys, everybody, thank you so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please be safe out there. And I know everybody's like wandering around. Still keep your social distance of six feet. Don't let these people touch you. They nasty. All right, thank you. Have a great day and until next time, deuces.